Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Angela. I am a full-time voiceover artist and audiobook narrator, and my channel is dedicated to those of you that are just getting started out in this wonderful world of voiceover and audiobook narration. And through my channel, I share with you some of the techniques that I use every day in my own voiceover business, and I answer your questions. So today, what I wanted to talk about was uh, another question that I have received a lot in the last couple of weeks, and that is really like how to develop characters. Say you're an audiobook narrator, or even if you're doing animation or um, e-learning sometimes, uh, commercial work where you have to take on a different character, uh, mostly uh, animation and audiobooks, I would think. But that's what we're going to talk about today is character development. So if you are ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, so as I mentioned in my intro, we're going to talk about character development today and how to make different character voices. And I have to say, it doesn't really matter if you're male or female, even though we are limited in some respects with what we can do. Not everybody falls into that category, let me tell you. There are some really talented voiceover artists who are female that can pull off a really, really believable male voice and vice versa. It's really, really impressive that some people can pull this off. I am not that talented. However, I know what I can and cannot do. So knowing what you can do to start is really going to help you uh, develop some of these characters. And through developing a character really can show you what you can and what you can't do. So what you have to first consider, and I always encourage everyone to maybe jump out of the box and try new things, is to you know take a look online. Um, look at different people or different cartoon characters. I, of course, can't show you any on this channel here without, you know, maybe upsetting somebody for copyright infringement. So I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. But was your, let's just say uh, you're going through an animation. You're hired to do an animation for a character voice, and the client has given you a picture which is always helpful. If you're in that situation when you're asked to voice a cartoon character or some sort of an animated figure, always ask for a picture of the character if you can, because seeing the picture and the attributes of that character can help you develop uh, an appropriate voice for them. And then, of course, the client is hopefully going to give you some sort of a direction on the age, if there's a specific accent, if they're more of like the gruff, you know, <laughs> heroin or maybe a cowboy, you know, they can give you some sort of direction on how they want the character to sound. But having the picture and seeing the attributes, are they hunched over? Are they, do they have like a large mouth? Do they have large teeth? Do they have maybe a grumpy face? You know, all of these different attributes can help you determine what they're going to sound like. So that is one of the best things that you can have is, A, a responsive client that will give you plenty of direction on the tone and sound of this character, and then also having a picture to see the attributes that you are going to have to probably make your own face make to make this a believable character with a voice. Um, for audiobooks, I get this question a lot, <laughs> and that is um, mainly for males asking me how to sound like a female in the audiobook. And first, what I want to bring to your attention is that not all authors want distinctive voices between their characters. Some authors are fine with you just being you and just narrating the book as you. And most of the authors that I have come across do want maybe a slightly, slightly distinctive voice for each character because as you go through the book and through different dialogues between characters, you want to be able to differentiate the different characters from each other. And like I said, more often than not, it's the males asking me to how, how to differentiate uh, male from female because obviously if you're male, you're going to sound like a male and you can just give another one maybe a little bit more of a gruff voice, you know, kind of throw it back into the back of your throat. And, you know, that same thing goes for females doing male voices. Or, I'm getting ahead of myself, but for males doing female voices, think about how females talk. Do we maybe enunciate a little bit more? 
Do we have maybe more of a breathy voice? You know, you don't have to do anything high pitched or just like, you know, crazy over the top to differentiate a female from a male, but just listen to commercials, listen to other audiobooks. That is something that I cannot stress enough, especially if you're an audiobook narrator. Listen to audiobooks, listen to how other narrators present these different character traits. That'll give you a lot of great ideas, and you can try them yourself to see if you can pull them off, right? So for males doing female characters, again, listen to how females talk. Uh, maybe we maybe we choose to color more words than males do. Maybe we're not as maybe monotone. Listen to the different ways that males talk and listen to the different ways that females talk. It's not so much pitch. It's more of cadence and tone, Right? And then the same thing goes for females trying to uh, replicate a male voice. Like I said before, you can kind of throw your voice up to the back of your throat and you can talk with a little bit more purpose. And, you know, depending on the situation, they could be an angry male and they could be, it could be just someone just, you know, talking to someone else across the room. There's There's the best way to find out what you can do with characters is to try a few yourself. And that comes with practice, right? That just comes with practicing and trying a few different things. But if you get a really fun audiobook where you get to do, you know, alien characters and stuff, you can definitely, if the author's okay with it, you can use effects in your DAW to make the voice very different. So those are always fun. But again, it also comes with knowing what the attributes of the character are. As you read through the book, does this character have uh, like a Russian accent? Does this character have, you know, missing teeth? Does this character have, you know, a mushed in nose? Does this character have, you know, any other facial attributes that would contribute to a certain type of voice or a a certain type of sound? And the same thing goes if they're hunched over or if they're crabby all the time or if they're a bubbly, you know, fairy princess. They're all going to have different sounds and different voices, right? Because they are who they are. So you have to take in consideration not just the sound that you can do, but how is the character supposed to sound? How is that character, based on the attributes that you know of, how is that character going to sound? But if you're ever in doubt about if your author is going to like, or your client, for, for example, even with the animation scenario, if you're ever in doubt about if this character voice that you have chosen for this character is going to be right or if they're going to like it, send them a sample. You know, reach out to the client and say, hey, I'm not too sure, but these are some of the ideas that I have for this character. Which one of these do you like? Send them a reel of different, you know, different character sounds and voices and let them tell you which one they prefer or which they had in mind for this particular character. And that'll save you a whole lot of time. But to sum up, get a picture if you can for animation, right? That'll help you determine character character voice. Um, Learn the attributes of this character. Is it male? Is it female? Is it alien? Is it fish? Is it bear? You know, are they grumpy? Are they, you know, do they have some sort of facial attributes that are going to contribute to the sound of their voice? Learn all of these up front and accents. Accents are important. Learn all of these attributes and just try a few different character voices. And if you're in doubt, ask the client. Send them a reel of different sounds and voices, you know, and let them choose which one they like the best. So I hope that helps you with your character development. Again, listening to audiobooks and listening to anything that has a character voice, even in like, cartoons and commercials, being a voice actor and audiobook narrator comes with, you really need to learn to actively listen to what's going on around you to give you some inspiration and some clarification on how things should sound or could sound. So I'm going off on tangents again, (laughs) but I enjoy character development. It's fun, right, to develop new characters. So anyway, if you found this video helpful, please please hit that like and subscribe buttons. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about anything else, voiceover or audiobook related, please leave them down below. 
And if you would like more information about me, my work, or how I can help you get started in voiceover, check out my website at voiceoverangela.com. Thank you so much for your time, and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.